10 years ago, 20 years ago, people were really writing off the Martinissi in the UK is heading towards oblivion. But we had a bit of luck where the Japanese felt that this is a good place to launch their major offensive into Europe. And the British learnt, the trade unions agreed. And now we have so much extra production that we're heading towards record output. So really the industry has got up from its deathbed and has really defeated all the prognostications that were being made for it only 20 years ago. We can make everything in this country still. We can design the vehicles, we can develop them, we can make the engines, we can make the gearbox, we can make just about everything. There's some things we can't make, but by and large, we're up there. But unfortunately, if you look at the trend over the last 40 years, the British content of cars made in the UK actually is falling. And in my estimation, the weighted average of the British content of all the cars that are made in the UK UK is somewhere around 65%. And in that, of course, you have to put labour and so on. So there are variations in the British content. We have to be very careful that it doesn't just become assembly, but at the moment it really is motor manufacturing. But it's something that we really have to keep our eye on, that it doesn't get worse than that, so to speak. Lean production, again, that's the mantra we learned from the Japanese. Good lesson. The Japanese car makers and component firms have almost been an MBA to British car making and British manufacturing, European manufacturing. And what it really means is that you get rid of all waste. You make sure that the waste disappears, not just in production, not just in R&D, but also in stock. Therefore, you have then the jargon of just-in-time, J-I-T. So many firms, unfortunately, when they put J-I-T in, think it's, Jesus, it's there. But that really isn't what it is. It simply means there's the supplier, there's the production line, and it should be seamless straight in. So the Japanese word is getting rid of muda, getting rid of waste. So lean production is actually efficient production. And we really have cl closed the gap with the Japanese. The advantage they used to have in unit costs compared with us in the West has gone. And therefore, they've got some good firms. But we've seen a number of Japanese firms, of course, in trouble. Firms like Nissan having really to be rescued by Renault, rescued by the French, for crying out loud, you know, it's almost like rescued by the Titanic. Also Mitsubishi having to be looked after by Daimler-Benz, but they left it aside, we move on. So they're no longer the supermen, but nevertheless, they did tell us the theory. Everybody thought the Japanese had put the theory into practice 100%, but they hadn't. But they put enough of it in to make everybody else realize this is a thing to do. In some ways, we in the West have taken this lean production concept on beyond what the Japanese were doing. Not all the component firms even out there now are efficient. It's impossible to have everybody efficient. So every year there are component firms closing. I'm chairman of the Welsh Automotive Forum. We have a finger on the pulse of just about every firm. And we've lost three very significant component manufacturers this year. Partly, one has to say, that it wasn't necessarily that the British base was that inefficient, but they had too much capacity all over Europe. And it is true, in terms of the contestable market, it's easy to come into Britain, but it's easy to get out, because the redundancy costs, the close-down costs of a plant in Britain is lower than it is in other parts of the EU. On the other hand, because firms know that, they might come in the first place. So it's a two-edged sword, really. But we still are not at the bottom of the curve, if you like, in stabilising the component sector. It's all very well, again, as I said, for people to talk about getting another £3 billion worth of demand into the supply sector. We've got to stop it leaching out. Otherwise, that's only going to be a, a gross figure, not a net one. So... What we're seeing on the car side, we are not yet seeing the component side. And unfortunately, the other leg in the, in the stool, which used to be very, very important, is, of course, the unheralded, non-Freudian industry, commercial vehicles. And a big 40-ton tractor unit, DAF in the front, costs more than a 7 Series BMW. It's very, very clever. It's very good. And all we have is effectively an assembly plant putting together other bits and pieces up in Lancashire. Used to be the Leyland plant making DAFs. But we'll never get that industry back because we've not had that new investment from the Japanese or anybody else. So in looking at, say, 
improvements in the balance of payments. Can we keep it going, this improvement? The balance of payment surplus in cars has reappeared for the first time since 1974. But will we ever get one back on components? That $3 billion will make a difference, but it won't make it a surplus. And of course, we have the big black hole of commercial vehicles. So the last time we had an overall surplus in the motor industry balance of trade was 1978, and one doesn't see the overall balance of payment surplus going back into the black. Cars, yes, thank goodness, but not necessarily overall.